Hello, I don't know what your last machine learning projects have been, but look at this. Researchers from Meta AI and Inria have trained a 10 billion parameter model, ah, we've seen bigger, on 1 billion Instagram images. Wait, Miss Coffee Bean, I know this can sound impressive, especially comparing the things we mortals use to train, but we are already familiar with huge models and enormous data sets. So what is the catch of this paper? <laughs> it's in the title. They trained the model on an uncurated data set of 1 billion images and pay attention even if the data is uncurated, possibly containing the worst of what the internet has to offer, the model is more robust and fair. This is too good to be true, I mean, we all know the garbage in, garbage out principle. How can a model trained on uncurated data be fairer when these models tend to reflect and sometimes even emphasize the biases in the data? Well, this is what we will find out in this AI coffee break. But first, check out our sponsor of today, Diffgram. The quality of your machine learning model depends on the quality of your training data making. Training data, the heart of all machine learning systems. But why would you trust a closed source solution for something as important as your data? Diffgram is an open source platform for everything related to training data. With contributors from all around the world, Diffgram helps you create and manage unlimited high-quality training data. Find out more about Diffgram from the link in the description. Now, back to the video. Large self-supervised models do seem to follow the garbage in, garbage out principle. Just think about GPT-3 that was trained on large datasets scraped from the internet. It produces toxic output false information, conspiracy theories, it exhibits sexism and racism. But Miss Coffee Bean, today we are not concerned with text models, but with large self-supervised vision models. On the vision realm, the toxicity meter is high too, because large vision models trained on ImageNet reflect the biases in the data. And yes, the one and only ImageNet contains problematic content, is biased by covering some geographical locations more than others, some races more than others. So no wonder that vision models reflect these biases too. What to do to fix the toxic model behavior? What people did so far, especially for ImageNet, was curate the data set. Also, for text, OpenAI released a better version of GPT-3 called Instruct GPT by fine-tuning GPT-3 on a curated dataset. Okay, so curating datasets is one solution, but you can imagine how laborious and costly it can be to annotate datasets. The larger the model, the larger the datasets, and dataset curation with little curated data can only get you so far. So what to do to create fairer models if dataset curation is so expensive? Well, the authors of this paper say, okay, just ditch dataset curation altogether and train the model on an uncurated dataset and still get a model that is fair and even fairer than previous models. Wow, I wonder why nobody had this idea earlier. Or they did, but they ended up with unfair models. <laughs> now we are really curious to find out how the authors managed to train on potentially garbage data and get a shiny model out of it. We are not sarcastic really, so let's follow the paper to see. The idea of the paper is not new, it relies on the experimental evidence that the more data, the better the features the neural network can learn. This is what the developments over the last years have shown us. So okay then, the authors took 1 billion random public images from Instagram. The only criterion was that the images should come from non-EU countries to comply to GDPR. Okay, now the meta AI researchers sit there with these 1 billion images, what to do with them? curate them, <laughs> filter them, nah, the dataset is too big for that, and we told you they decided to ditch dataset curation and still hope for fairness. Yeah, but how? Anyway, the authors trained a model and called it SEER, which is just a regnet architecture. A regnet is a variant of the well-known ResNet, where the residual connections are regulated by a recurrent neural network. The previous biggest model in the Regnet family was only 1.5 billion parameters big. 
In order not to underfit the data, the model size should match or surpass the dataset size, so the authors scaled up the regnet to make a SEER, a regnet model scaled up to 10 billion parameters. Just imagine the necessary engineering work to parallelize this thing on a cluster. But you do not need to imagine the work. You can read a lot of details in the paper about how they pre-trained the model on 496 NVIDIA A100 GPUs. I do not have these at home, do you? This paper covers the hardware aspect far more extensively than usual papers. But now let's discuss how the authors trained this thing. SEER was pre-trained with suave self-supervision. This basically teaches the model to compute representations of the data such that the representations of different patches of the same image are assigned to the same cluster. And then for using and testing SEER on interesting downstream tasks, the authors appended a linear layer and fine-tuned the model for each task. So, in terms of architecture and self-supervised training objective, this paper does not bring anything new. But the paper really shines when it comes to evaluating the model. The authors evaluate SEER on 50 benchmarks in total, and these tests contain classical computer vision tasks like image classification or detecting whether an image is a copy of another, which is useful for enforcing copyright. Of course, the large language model trained on huge amounts of data has good visual representations and is either keeping pace with the competition or establishes new state of the art. But this is not what we are concerned with today because within those 50 benchmarks there are also four fairness benchmarks. To summarize the very long experimental sections, the authors basically compare a SEER model trained on the 1 billion uncurated Instagram images against a smaller version trained on ImageNet. Consistently, SEER is fairer when it comes to metrics measuring potential biases with respect to skin color, age groups, gender, geographical diversity. Okay, Miss Coffee Bean, but how does this happen? It is totally expected that SEER being a big model having seen lots of training data can impress on computer vision tasks, having learned good visual features, but why is it fairer? It is trained on uncurated data as we are reminded by the title, the abstract, and uh, the introduction of the paper. Why does SEER not reflect biases as we have seen with GPT-3? Well, the explanation of the authors is that the model, having seen lots and lots of data, is not only capable of capturing better visual features, but other human values too. And uh, this was it, the explanation. We could not find further information about this in the paper. Or maybe the paper just does not say Instagram images as often as it should, but chooses to say random internet images. The word Instagram first occurs in the paper in the caption of figure 2 and section 3.2 in the main text body. So, SEER is not trained on any uncurated dataset, but on Instagram images. Instagram pictures are subject to the platform's policy and upload guidelines. These counter hate speech targeting individuals and harassment. So, sure, the authors do not curate the 1 billion Instagram images used for training SEER, but Instagram's guidelines themselves acted as pre-filtering and data curation to reflect a, we cite, diverse community of cultures, ages and beliefs. Then the lesson of the paper and the SEER model is sure Instagram images might not need more filtering and curation, but not any uncurated image dataset can provide a fairness basis for large vision models. This message can be well understood when carefully reading the paper, but we still find the title, abstract and introduction not transparent enough on this. Especially we would have liked to see experiments that assess how certain things influence the quality of the dataset and how they act as a pre-filtering, such as the upload guidelines and policies of Instagram, the correlation between Instagram usage and the ethical values of the users and so on. So with this paper we have seen again that scaling laws apply and data and model sizes can get you good downstream tasks 
performance and maybe, but only maybe, other emergent phenomena such as fairness. We would still be very cautious to say that uncurated data is the way to go. We consider uncurated data in general to be still unsafe and we should not wait and pray for models trained on uncurated data sets to avoid biases and toxic behavior through magic or emergence. We should make an active effort about this. What do you think? Are you now an uncurated data set believer? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. Oh.